G'day guys, I'm Phil Robertson, the driver of Canada Sail GP team, and today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of our F50 and uh, probably go into a bit more detail so you guys can see the, the nuts and bolts of the thing. Turn it towards Mark 1 where we're going to see some huge speeds. Another great start. Quick disclaimer this video could be quite boring and a little bit technical, so if you're not into it, discontinue watching. <laughs> First up, this is our base, I guess, and as you can see, there's probably quite a lot of people inside working on the boat, doing their thing, as uh, it is as we're prepping for our event here in Cadiz. She lives in the Beaver Dam, so come on in and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take you through and show you a bit more. Starting in detail, um, we'll start at the front of the boat, but obviously it has uh, quite a big fairing here, so uh, structurally the boat is um, sort of held together by the bobstay here, which is full carbon fibre um, and the spine, and that sort of holds all your rig tension and holds, keeps the boat together. But uh, this is actually just a big fairing, effectively, so to try and sort of end plate the jib and stop all the vortices underneath the jib. So. She's, uh, yeah, all, we use a, a film called um, Plyzer, so that just gets stuck on and shrunk to get it nice and tight, and obviously all the rest of it is just carbon fibre, very lightweight um, sort of fairings, I guess. Uh, we walk a little bit further back, and these are the big foily woilies, um, or foils, I guess you can call them, but they're, um, these are actually the light, light air boards. Graham here working on the uh, cover plates, so inside is just a big empty space with um, rams. It's sort of a big wet box that the foil can um, canton. I think it's about 11 degrees and then rake forward and aft about 11 degrees as well, I think. So we'll keep moving back. Um, again, more fairings. Uh, these come off the back of the front beam. Um, these again are plies are super lightweight with little carbon frames in them but again they just give the boat a lot of lift so um, yeah when you change the pitch of the boat obviously you're changing the angle of these fairings giving it lift or um, even some downforce in at some moments when we're sailing. Uh, the trampoline was what we run over all the time it's uh, yeah pretty pretty standard for catamarans but uh, yeah again another massive massive fairing on the back here of the boat uh, super fragile as well. We definitely smash them apart when we do a big nose dive or capsize the boat and right it. They, they don't, they don't like, um, I guess, any any force or tension. So they're all. Whoa! Oh, no! Yeah, they're lightweight, but it's huge, and it's um, again just gives so much lift to the back of the boat and uh, cleans all the airflow up as it goes over the back beam and and out the back of the boat. Um, these are little stern extensions, so. Um, our rudder box here, you can sort of see inside here is, uh, I guess, where the rudder is controlled or your rudder rake and we just fold the sterns in just to sort of, I guess, give the back of the boat a bit more buoyancy, um, especially when we put the big wing on. Uh, they used to be just cut flush here and this was a, a little addition at the start of season two. Yeah, so the, the whole boat is actually carbon fibre. It's extremely lightweight but strong. Uh, it's sort of a very, very thin skin of carbon with a honeycomb core and then another thin skin on the inside. So super fragile if you um, sort of, it's, it's strong in one sense, but also super fragile if you hit it, you'll dent it and uh, quite easy to break it as well. So it's fragile, but it's super strong in certain directions, how it's been designed. And then it's, um, yeah, obviously very lightweight, which helps the flying. And I think total package of the boat when it's sailing is around two and a half tons. So not too heavy. But come on upstairs. Well, um, quite simply, this is where the grinders grinders uh, work. Uh, they have their pedestal here, which is connected through this this carbon rod um, to the bevel box, and this directly drives the winch. So they control effectively the the wing. I guess the wing sheet is trimmed on by the grinders, and the wing trimmer actually just eases the wing the whole time. So they've got to be bloody good sailors. They've got to um, be able to feel the boat, feel the heel, and are trimming the wing up and, well, up, I guess, when the <laughs> wing trimmer eases it. And, and they, their big focus of the grinders is keeping the roll of the boat on a certain uh, angle, which we're probably target, targeting around 
negative two to negative three degrees of uh, heel. Um, but they work here. The one guy is facing backwards the whole day, so he's got a pretty special ride. And the other guy facing forward. Yeah, so the forward facing grinder, he has um, all the jib buttons here, so uh, he can actually invert the wing as well. So in the maneuvers, he's um, inverting the wing from one side to the other. He's got his jib lead in and out, so he can change the position or the lead or the angle of the jib. And then he's got the jib Cunningham as well, changing the tension of their sail. And on his feet, he has the jib sheet. So jib sheet on and jib sheet off um, there as well. So quite a busy, busy little roll. Um, we'll jump back here. This is a boat with one rope. And this is the rope. <laughs> but sitting down here in this lovely little seat is where the uh, flight controller resides. So he's um, got a pretty interesting job of he is completely focused on the right height of the boat, looking through the trampoline here at the opposite side bow, so the front of the boat on the opposite side. And his role is um, effectively, I guess his job description is to fly the boat one to 1.2 meters above the water at all times and don't get it wrong. Uh, if he's too low, you're going a bit slower, you're creating a lot more drag. If he's too high, you're either sliding sideways or you're going into one hell of a nosedive. So he uh, controls the lured foil uh, with this wheel. Um, they call it the pepper cracker as well because it's a bit, bit pepper crackerish. But he, um, yeah, he, he's playing the, the rake on the other side of the boat the whole time constantly and he'll be moving that non-stop. So that's a, a, a constantly moving, I guess, target. Uh, he has a screen here which has all his info and all the data that he needs um, to assist with his role. And then on the, all the buttons here as well, he has um, all the rudder angles and differential changes that he can do. Uh, some of the flight controllers also pop the wing during a maneuver. Um, and then on the other side is another wheel which directly controls this foil when it goes down. So every maneuver he is um, effectively flying both, both boards, doing two things at once. And, uh, yeah, having a good crack at it. Moving over here, he has all his presets. So he's got about four different modes for um, uh, all your maneuvers. So your tacks and your jibes. He's got an upwind mode and a downwind boat mode. So he puts the boat in upwind mode. He does all his configurations for his tacks, I guess. And so what he changes is the angle that the board drops at and the, I, I guess, type of um, energy that he's using as well. So it's all hydraulic, but he's got an accumulator which he can tap into. He's got, I guess, a natural airdrop he can sort of use, and that's all coded through the boat's computer. And um, yeah, he just has all his presets here that he can change on the fly or whenever he likes. And um, usually you're just sort of dialing that in at the start of the day and then leaving it for, for the day until the conditions change or something like that. Um, the all important protest button, that's a big one. Apparently they don't want to put it on the skipper's wheel and we all probably know why that is. It's an awkward position to get to so you've really got to pick the time to push that protest button. Uh, also a man overboard button so hopefully that never happens. Moving right on back. Wing trimmer sits here so he holds this wing sheet which is connected to the back of the wing. Um, basically does a lot of easing all day while the grinders grind it back on. So uh, he sits here holding the wing sheet and then he's got this toggle switch here which is um, it's actually a wing twist. So to put it simply, the bottom of the wing has a camber of let's say 20 degrees and you can get to about negative 15 camber in the top of the wing. So by pushing this down, you're sort of changing the camber of the top of the wing and pulling it up, you're closing it. So I guess in, in a normal sailing boat, maybe it's sort of what your Cunningham does uh, and twist your sails and, and a little bit of your sheet. But yeah, it's a very, very simple sort of solution I guess to twisting your wing so a lot of the guys are now constantly moving this as well this is a uh, something that has never sort of stopped in controlling the roll of the boat using your twist and try not to move the wing sheet so so much uh, over here on his little panel um, he's got some very colorful little buttons but all all for for feel but effectively he's got his camber plus and minus so you can change the the angle of the bottom camber of the wing so that goes up to about 30 five degrees. Um, you sail around sort of upwind roughly 20, 21 and downwind, um, depending on your mode, you might go up to 35 degrees if it's quite light and you're trying to go really deep. But he constantly changes this before upwind, downwind. Um, he has his invert buttons here as well for the wing. And oh, he's got his diff buttons as well, sorry. So he can change the differential of the rudders. 
um, plus and minus there as well. So here's space for more buttons and um, there will be upgrades as well coming to this and he'll, he'll start to get a few more buttons. But on his feet is uh, jib sheet buttons. I'm almost a little bit vertically challenged to be able to do this roll. But uh, on his feet he has the jib sheet on, jib sheet off. Um, and the daggerboard up button as well. So in every maneuver, he then stamps on this daggerboard up button and lifts this board as you come out of a manoeuvre. Some of them are then leaning back and driving um, whilst either holding the sheet or changing the twist of the wing. Um, yeah, and then down on his display is all his wings set up. So on his, yeah, on his screen here, it has all his wing settings and all the numbers that he sort of needs to know to be able to effectively perform his tasks. But yeah, he's got the very old school cleat there that uh, uh, that usually only gets used in the light airs. Um, just when you're trying to pull the wing down and you don't really need a human cleat to sit there and hold it, you can just lock it off, but it's not utilised very often. <laughs> Jumping back to the least important role on the boat, um, the driver here. <laughs> um, again, uh, he has the ability to fly the boat. So these are, I guess, what we call the twist grips. So nice little grip on the boat and rolling that forward and backwards is changing your lured foil. So both of them do the same foil down to the, the lured side. So you can fly the boat and I guess most, well, probably all skippers are flying the boat as the flight controller crosses. And that's probably about it at the moment. Um, originally when the, probably the systems weren't quite up to it, the, a lot of the houses were flying the boat as well as uh, driving it. Um, so on the wheel here are all the, I guess, your rudder differential buttons. So max diff, you pretty much sail around at max differential the whole time. So what that means is your rudders are basically set on one angle and let's call it three degrees of lift. And then you're sort of adding seven degrees of differential in them. So your windward rudder is as much negative as it can go. And your leeward rudder is effectively on a positive, a much greater positive angle. So it's a seven degree differential that we run on these boats. And it effectively gives you about a thousand kgs of downforce on your back corner of the boat. So riding moment, I guess, is the, the simple way to put it. So it's quite a lot. And you'll see quite often when boats do a big nose dive, it's usually because the windward rudder has popped out of the water. So they suddenly lose a thousand kgs of downforce which skies the boat into the air and then throws it down into a pretty violent little nosedive. So the trick is to keep your windward rudder in the water at all times. That's the aim of the game, is to sail around with as much differential. Um, you have a little dial here. Um, it goes up to 11. Um, and that just changes your gain rate of, of these twist grips. So down at one, the foil's gonna move nice and slowly. Up at 11, she's gonna move nice and fast. Uh, diff neutral, so you can hit that and uh, bring your differential back to neutral and then just add and subtract. And you're moving that every now and then when you're going downwind, um, just when you're probably coming into a bottom mark and you get it a bit wrong or you need to do a soak or something, you're hitting the neutral or adding a bit or taking some off and then hitting it back to max. Uh, rudder buttons on the feet here as well, so you can change your overall lift on the back of the boat, so I guess your pitch. Uh, plus and minus and then you also have a camp lead button which is kind of known as the go slow button so that's a, a big no-no to hit that one yeah so these little spare ears it's um i guess in a, in a in a situation you don't want to go in is if the boat's upside down and you're stuck you have some spare air here to grab and uh, use we also carry them on us uh, we have a tank which gives you about a minute to two minutes of uh, air underwater uh, if you're trapped and yeah god forbid that never happens but they are there for safety reasons. Um, these lines are the rudder lines. They um, connect to the, I guess, to the, the chain that was around the wheel. Quite very classic boating style. And they're connected back to the, um, I guess, to the, to the tiller, you could call it. Yeah, I guess back in here are your, your rudder bars. They connect the two rudders together. And um, also your, your, your rams to control your rake and all the rudder systems are all tucked inside this back beam and fairing, so nice and tidy. Right, come with me up here. <laughs> I have a little something to show you. I can show <laughs> you the world. Yeah, nice. So uh, up in here is uh, basically where all the magic happens in the boat. Um, 
you have your uh, computers, firstly. So I believe there's two computers on the boat. Uh, all your electronics are kept up in there in a nice little waterproof box. Uh, then you have your um, a pump down there as well for all your hydraulics and then some cooling fans as well to try and keep everything nice and cool in there because it gets a little bit hot inside the old potty waddy. Um, and then also your sort of all your um, jib rams and everything are tucked up in there as well. So yeah, a lot of action down in there and uh, yeah, a pretty pretty cool part of the boat. These are, um, I guess this is all your all your hydraulics and electronics that get connected to the wing when it goes into the boat. So everything runs down inside, back to the heart of the boat down in here, and um, yeah, is well distributed. But it's messy, and uh, definitely nothing that I get involved in touching, as you can see. So if we move forward, you have your very standard jib track here. Um, jib sheet comes out of the front of the boat and back through the car, which is on a very standard jib track. Um, couple of boxes here. I believe that's a, one of the media boxes. Uh, and then up, up in the front of the boat here is what, I guess, your battery. So um, they do a lot of, they, we, we can carry out to four batteries on the boat. Um, media gets all run through that. So all the telemetry that you guys see on TV that's coming off the boat and getting overlaid onto the screen is um, yeah, run by these batteries. And then also all the hydraulic and electronic functions on the boat are all uh, yeah, driven by those batteries which are lovely charged by solar power. So very nice and green. Uh, so right up here are the board cases. Uh, I'll start at the top. This is the lock that basically when the board goes down, oh someone's working in there. Hey buddy. Uh, when the board gets fired down it actually clips I guess onto a little roller here which keeps the board locked down and then you don't need any hydraulic power to keep it down. So that gets locked down. Um, this post is the lifting post. Uh, a line runs up from here down through a nice lovely little purchase system onto these rams here uh, to lift the board up. And then inside the case here is a lovely concoction of rollers and bearings that the board slides up and down on. So the boards are basically you've got your can to the board which is run off this ram which in here inside the boat so that controls the can to the board so effectively you want the the board is canted at about 11 degrees outboard uh, when we're sailing and that's just giving you riding moment and, and power uh, and then when it's pulled up it's I think positive five degrees to try and get the tip of the foil out of the water so yeah if you think about it as, as we're sailing with the board up it's like this when the board gets fired down the tips basically pointing down and and uh, generating all your lift to keep these boats flying. Uh, in the bow of the boat here is a huge ram which controls the rake, um, which the flight controller is doing. There's plenty of hydraulics in this boat. So yeah, obviously on the tail of the cat there is the um, media center. So that's got a camera that's mostly live. Uh, also your microphone down the bottom there, just picking up a bit of that wind noise that's getting blown over the boat. And then all the sailors have a microphone on them with not quite noise cancelling, but very noise, I guess, uh, dampening headphones on so we can communicate. And it's probably one of the things that you don't realise, but when you're sitting on the side of the boat doing 90 kilometres an hour, you physically can't really talk to the person next to you. They can't hear you. So we're all calmed up with, um, with mics and headsets and to, just to be able to communicate. And then that also goes through the whole media system. So... Uh, we can't get away with saying any naughty words. So up on the bow there, the um, you can call it the, the, the bow sprit. Uh, nothing hangs off there apart from the camera as well, which, which catches all our movements. And then uh, in front of that is our, our Windex and all our wind gear. So basically wind speed and direction it's, it's giving and then it that goes through the computer and then we've got this lovely software which um, gives us our targets, tells us what we should be doing, how fast we should be going, what angle we should be sailing at compared to what the little wind wand is saying at the front of the boat. And that's how we try and navigate our way around the course. So yeah, obviously here is, um, there's usually a little ball here and that's what the wing sits on. So it sits on a little ball with, and that's got, the wing has a cup fitting. Um, and it's a, obviously a rotating thing. So the wing can spin around and, and rotate on that. 
and this is actually just a sensor so the sensor is giving you your wing angle i guess and and that goes back into the oracle cloud and all the data is there for us to analyze everything to the uh, nth degree but um, talking of data on the boat there's i think over there's 1200 data points uh, at any moment so you can imagine what we dive into when uh, at the end of a day when we, we've seen something pretty good coming off another boat or we feel like we were in a good mode um, or had some good moments, you'll, you'll go back, look at all the data, pick it apart and, and really be able to find whatever you want to find out about how, how these boats are sailed. And the cool thing with this series is every team's data is open so we can go and pick apart any team we want and see exactly what they're doing at any moment on the course with, yeah, everything on the boat. So it's, uh, it's quite unique and gets new teams up to speed pretty quickly which is probably the situation we've been in. Yeah I think what, one of the cool things about this this league and series is uh, these boats are uh, recycled from the America's Cup in uh, 2017 but the cool thing is they've got SailGP as a full-time design team and they're constantly working on improvements upgrades to everything so these boats are constantly changing they're um, yeah I guess you could definitely say they're at the forefront of technology when it comes to sailboat racing and um, it's pretty cool to be involved with, to be honest, and, and cool to see how it all develops. And there's some big sort of upgrade packages coming into the next season, and it's going to change the game again, make, it, make the boat a little bit different and harder to sail, and also go a bit faster, which is what we love. Well, thanks for coming on this little tour with me. I uh, hope you guys got some good insights into what this boat's actually like and, and, and uh, the technical side of it and how it's sort of run and put together. But... Yeah, look, if you guys have any questions, fire them our way and we'll definitely do our best to try and answer them for you. So stay focused.